Hey guys, welcome to the studio. Today, a very special episode trying to explain you how a synthesizer works, the absolute basics, but also going deeper into how it works and all shown on this very legendary Mini Moog. It's an original unit, probably the most iconic synthesizer, and we'll go through how a sound is generated, how you can sound design, how this thing actually works so you can do the same at home with any kind of synthesizer or with a software synthesizer, it doesn't matter. So let's get started. Very iconic sound, I absolutely love it. Um, this right here is everything you need to desi design most of the sounds. We got the oscillator bank, the mixer, the modifier. We'll start right here with the oscillator bank because that's where the sounds are being generated. Three oscillators, all of them are equal. The first one doesn't have a, a fine tune because it's, it's bound to the global tune right over here. We got octaves, so if I hit a note, we can go up and down as well as going through the different waveforms. We got here a triangle, as well as sawtooth, and in between, and then three types of square. Next up is a volume knob to mix this oscillator into the entire mixer section. This one is pretty straightforward. You got three volume knobs and then on and off switches for all of the different oscillators. Um, let's turn number one and two on. And let's put the second oscillator onto a saw and maybe really high up. So you can hear the two different sounds playing at the same time. The third one goes in there as well. And you can add any kind of external input. This could be another synth, a sample, something else. You can send everything in here and it becomes part of the synthesizer from here on out as well as the noise. Let's maybe just listen to the noise. And you can switch it between white and pink. And there's like a, a trick. Uh, you can detune the, the two second, the second and third oscillator by a bit. Let's maybe turn the noise off and the oscillator's on again. You can use it slightly to fatten up the sound if both of them are detuned slightly or you can build kind of uh, chords by putting it by minus three, five or seven. The next of our three main parts are the modifiers and there are like two separate sections. We'll start with the lower one because it's a little easier. It's called the loudness contour. You're all familiar with it. Probably it's ADSR, but here is uh, the R. The release is missing, but there is a little switch that transforms the decay into a release. That's a little special about the synthesizer. Let's start with the tack. So I'm hitting a note, and whenever I hit it, it plays immediately. If I turn up a tack, the sound ramps up a little. Decay is the next part after the sound reaches its, its peak. It's kind of the decaying part from the attack top part to the sustain level. Gives you a clicky short kind of sound. So if I turn the sustain all the way down and I hold down the note, it will cut out although I'm still holding it. If I turn it up, it will play as long as I hit it. And then there is release. For the release, I have to engage the switch one right here on the synthesizer. And now the node is still playing after I let go. And the longer I set the decay time, but it's now actually a release, the longer it will play. So I think that's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. The next part is maybe the only one that gets a tiny bit complicated because it's a little less intuitive, but still pretty easy let's let's go up here is the entire filter section the cutoff is still pretty straightforward it's just cutting away the high frequencies so right here full bright sound and then cutting it the emphasis is the resonance so on the cutting frequency there is a, a bump a spike that creates a resonating sound that is bound to the cutoff frequency so if i move it it will it will shift with it Let's maybe exaggerate a little. 
you can really hear how it follows. So let's turn this one down again, because this can get quite annoying. Uh, attack, decay, sustain right on here is actually not controlling the loudness. It's controlling how the filter behaves. So if I turn up attack, it will still play immediately, but the filter will open up after a short while. It's basically like turning it by hand, but the attack does it for you. So the, the cutoff is ramping up. Decay is the decay of the cutoff frequency. You get again a clickier sound, so just the cutoff is just open for the very like initial attack time. And then cuts and sustain if you hold it long, the cutoff will stay open. Or die out after a shorter while. You see it stays bright whenever I, I, let, uh, I still hold the key. The last one is the amount of the ADS on the synthesizer. So this controls the voltage that these three generate to control the cutoff. So this kind of mixes them into the cutoff but voltage controlled. So yeah, you basically just mix three sound sources with different waveforms and octaves into each other. You can add noise or external inputs, and then you control modified with the modifiers, the loudness contour for attack, decay, sustain, and then of course, uh, attack, decay, sustain for the, the filter cutoff and the resonance frequency. That's like the basics. I'd say almost every synthesizer has these kind of controls. There are some exceptions, but most of them work in this kind of way. Some have more oscillators, some use uh, different methods of generating simple tones instead of oscillators that can just do basic waveforms. There are some synths that can do more complicated stuff and you mix it together, but the basic principle stays the same. And just to complete everything that is on here, we got a uh, main volume, a, a test tone to, uh, to get it in pitch, main output on and off, on and off of the unit, and then uh, volume of the headphones. There is something a little special. You can feed the headphones into the back of the unit to have it as the external input, which creates a feedback that is probably the nicest thing on the synth. Let's, let's play it. It's absolute madness. I absolutely love it. There's a little lamp, it shows you that it's overloading, that makes it even more epic. It's, that's the best thing by far. And it's hard to emulate with uh, digital stuff, but everything I'm teaching you, you can do also with your software synthesizer, no problem. Then there is another special feature, because this one right here is a monophonic synthesizer, so you can play chords, you can only play one note at a time. It has a glide built in. You engage it right over here. I think, yeah, it was already on. Let's. Let's do the overload a little less. It's now gliding through all of the notes in between. If you hit a low one, a higher one, let's exaggerate it. It's a nice effect, especially for bass lines. If you do it in a moderate way, it sounds really, really epic. More on that in a bit. I'll try to show you like three example sounds and how you sculpt them. There is a really fun thing, same as we can with the attack, the case sustain control, the behavior of the cutoff and save us from opening, closing it on every note. The attack does it for you. We can do modulation stuff to make things automatic that just happen. Um, and you can set it with the third oscillator on this one. So you can engage the third oscillator to be a control voltage modulation for the filter, for example, you turn it on right here and then you put the third oscillator pretty low to get a slower wave. Let's turn everything else off and this one on so you can hear it. Uh, the glide off. So that's the generated tone. And now we're feeding this into the cutoff but we're turning it off so we don't hear it actually. Let's turn the octave down. And now if I turn the mod wheel, 
it will start modulating the cutoff. So it's automatically now opening and closing based on the signal the third oscillator is sending to it. And I can change the, the signal by increasing, decreasing the pitch of it. Can also change the octave. So now it's slower because it's lower. The waveform is spread out more for the control voltage. Can make it faster again and slower. And, and with the wheel right here, I control the amount of it, how much control voltage of the third oscillator is being feed it into the cutoff. And you can do the same thing, use the control voltage amount with flipping the switch to control the oscillator pitch. So now it will modulate the cutoff as well as the, the, the frequency of the other oscillators. normal sound and now the third oscillator controls the frequency of the two other oscillators. And that's basically how you get those freakier kind of sounds that wobble and do certain things. On this synth right here, frequency and cutoff can be modulated. Other synthesizers let you modulate a whole lot more, it gets a lot more complicated. But these basics, you can you can make like 95% of all of the sounds you'll need to make uh, to make music with a synthesizer. Now let's do uh, three quick examples, just so you see it in action and and get a feel and understanding how to set it up to get to certain sounds. So let's get it back to normal oscillator modulation filter modulation off. Let's turn off of the oscillators, just the one, on a saw waveform, octave is the right one, and let's make a, a snappy bass line. That's already it, this could be used as a bass line. You can turn it in a sustained bass line pretty easily by just uh, increasing the release. Turn on the glide. Way more exciting bass line. For lead sound, I'd add definitely oscillators. Slightly detuned, um, two of them saw, one of them triangle. Open up the cutoff a little, resonance up to taste. If you turn up the attack, you get more a uh, brass kind of sound. Let's turn off the glide. And then one thing I really love to do is just like simple hi-hats. You just use the white noise. And the decay really down. and you can play around with it to lengthen the hi-hats and shorten them. So yeah, that, that's basically it. It's all simple. I would highly advise you to try it out yourself. You don't even need to know what they do, these knobs. Just know what it will sound like if you turn it up and down and how they behave and how things affect other stuff. It's pretty easy, straightforward. Try it out on your software synthesizer, no problem. If you want to fatten up the sound, this right here is a mono, monophonic synth. 
I would advise to add some delay, some reverb just to make it fat. You could also record it twice and pan one left, one right. There are a lot of methods to get this up. The overload, the feedback into itself is probably still like the, the coolest thing. So yeah, try it out. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. If you're interested of me going through other synthesizer types, hit the like. If we get enough likes, I'll do one probably granular synthesizers, uh, wavetable and FM. There's, there's still a lot of stuff to discover. Thanks for watching. See you again here in the studio soon.